To restore peace on its territory, Ukraine has taken a key decision. All settlements occupied by Russian troops must be liberated. Therefore, there can be no talk of a ceasefire, which the leaders of the Kremlin have repeatedly asked for. Literally today, Deputy Foreign Minister of the Russian Federation Ryabko says in a hysterical manner, we want quick negotiations because we are scared. What is happening in the South, we understand will happen in all the occupied territories, where they wrote this Russia is here forever boards. They are so scared, but continue to insult us. They continue to shell our infrastructure, but they want to quickly sit down at the negotiating table and negotiate a ceasefire. Even today, they are only talking about a ceasefire. Mikhailo Podolak, advisor to the head of the office of the president of Ukraine, in an interview with NW Radio. There will be no negotiations with Russia to end the war, Ukraine's prosecutor General Andriy Kostin said. Moscow must be held accountable for its actions in Ukraine, because in each liberated locality investigators receive numerous testimonies of torture, executions and sexual violence against women and children. But for Europeans who would like to speed up the process of peace negotiations, it is difficult to realize and understand. They don't hear missiles, they don't know what bombing is, they don't know what murders, rapes, robberies are. Andrei Kostin, Prosecutor General of Ukraine, in an interview with the BBC. At this stage, it is impossible to stop the war in Ukraine with the help of diplomacy. This was stated by German Chancellor Olaf Scholz. According to UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres, he does not supply any kind of peace, but one that is based on the values of the UN Charter and on the basis of international law. British Defense Secretary Ben Wallace called the Russian army's flight another strategic failure for Moscow. It suffered enormous human losses as a result of invasion and achieved only international isolation and humiliation. I think it's up to the Ukrainians to decide when and how they want to negotiate. Ultimately, Ukraine will want to do that from a position of strength. The momentum is with Ukraine. I, I can't see why Ukraine would stop now. The escape of the Russian army from Kherson has significantly undermined Putin's credibility and called into question his ability to deliver on his promises. Analysts of the American Institute for the Study of War came to such conclusions. Against the backdrop of the deoccupation of Kherson, the White House also reacted to the possibility of negotiations between Ukraine and Russia. Ukraine is the party of peace in this conflict, and Russia is the party of war. Russia invaded Ukraine. If Russia decides to stop fighting in Ukraine and leaves, the war will end. If Ukraine decides to stop fighting and surrenders, it will be the end of Ukraine. Jake Sullivan, White House National Security Advisor, in a statement to reporters. A post-war peace plan for Ukraine has been developed by an international group for several months. It is led by the head of the president's office, Andriy Yermak, and former NATO Secretary General, Anders for Rasmussen. It is based on the fact that after the end of the war, Ukraine should receive security guarantees from the West. Defense Minister Oleksiy Reznikov also voiced his vision of a peaceful Ukraine. I think it's a future that we will have Ukrainian uh, military uh, industry which will be the best partner with uh, our uh, partner country uh, industries like Poland or Slovak or Czech or Germany and we will see. On November 1516, leaders of the G20 countries should discuss which way Ukraine can achieve peace faster. Reported by Sergei Kulas, Natalia Husak, UATV.